welcome to or welcome back to my channel if you are new here. My name is Katie. I am a graduate student at Parsons School of Design in their fashion studies program where I study the sociocultural phenomenon of fashion. Today I am going to be taking you along a journey, an experience if you will, of turning myself into a vintage little lady with weird curly bangs and poofy hair. I'm also going to answer some of your burning questions about dressing vintage and being a graduate student in New York City. Stay tuned and I'm going to hand things off to yesterday Katie. a great idea in hindsight. Hello, it's yesterday, Katie. We are going to put these in my hair and I'm going to attempt to walk you through how I do it. How I do it is uh, not very systematic and I'm usually just hoping for the best. So, use this quasi tutorial at your own risk. So as you guys can see, I um, cut my bangs the other night. Insert footage here. <laughs> okay, so you do that and then you grab it. Cut it wherever you want it to go. I'm gonna cut it long and we'll see. And we'll just go from there. It's happening! <laughs> yeah, you can't think about it. You just gotta do it. I love your just full send. See? Wait, that's cute as fuck. Mm hmm. Except for the middle part, it's a little, a little much. But <laughs> you're like, okay, you're, it's, it's giving like middle school emo, okay? <laughs> I'm even wearing an MCR t-shirt right now. <laughs> it's giving early 2000s on a bit. Things never change, do they? Okay, okay, let's like uh, let's make it a little like a little shorter. Yeah, that seems like a good amount. I totally I didn't even look or measure to see how much I need to come off. <laughs> And now I look like Dwight Schrute. I go home in like, how many days? Four days now? And James is gonna be like, Katie, what did you do? Oh my god, they're so cute. Yeah. So now I have this to deal with, and I've only done them once, and they came out like, okay, but I'm not confident in reproducing that, so we're just gonna see what happens. To get your wonderfully whimsical vintage hair, you're going to need a few things. And first is setting lotion. Setting lotion is the product that keeps the curls in your hair. You're also going to need some curlers. I use these cushion curlers. They're a little bit easier on my hair and they don't have the plastic clips that tend to rip my hair out. You're also going to need a scarf to tie over your curlers to keep them in place because you should be putting these in at night and sleeping with them overnight to let the curls really dry and set up. And then lastly, of course, you're going to need a hairbrush. I recommend something bigger than this, but this is what I had on me. And let's get started. When doing a curler set, some people like to start with like second day hair. I just like my hair to be as clean for as long as possible, so I am starting with clean hair. So I'm going to section out my hair, usually in about one inch sections, spray it down with a lot of body, and then roll it up. I'll start with my bangs this time. So putting curlers in for the first time can definitely be a little bit awkward, and especially if you have short bits of hair like bangs, it can be hard to actually get them to go around the curler without falling out. So if you have a bit of a hard time, don't worry, it's okay. Practice definitely makes it easier. But yeah, I use two curlers on each side for my bangs. So for the pieces around my face, like my bangs, I like to curl them towards my face. So as I am taking the curler, I'm gonna place it underneath my hair and then curl it in towards my face. When my hair was longer, I would put it behind my hair and curl it away from my face. But we're trying something new. Now we repeat that like about 40 times. So I'm going to do the formal Q&A as I am getting ready, but Galen suggested that I talk a little bit about why I like to do my hair this way and why I like to dress this way. And a lot of it, I don't really have a very solid answer for it besides I just kind of 
do. But I did go through a period of time after I graduated high school and I was becoming a young adult where I was trying to figure out what my style was and how I wanted to present myself to the world because as a teenager, I was very much an emo kid, but I felt like that never fully encapsulated who I was as a person because I really love emo music, but I'm a little bit more, I don't know, <laughs> whimsical than that and a lot of that for me came out as cosplay when I had the time and money to cosplay but I stopped cosplaying when I went into community college because I didn't really have the time for it but I still wanted to like do something with my style and creativity as some somehow so there's like a very fine line between the cosplay community and the historical costuming community on social media. And then there's a very fine line between the historical costuming community and the vintage community on social media. So as I went about my little cosplay hobby, slowly transitioning out of it, I looking at historical costumers and people who do like historically accurate versions of characters, which led me to people who did vintage ver versions of characters. And I really liked the style and I definitely started off more strict 1940s and 1950s when I first got into vintage and it has since then just kind of become this kind of loosey-goosey vaguely vintage-esque vibe that I try to go for on a daily basis and I like it better than mainstream fashion because I just have to be a pygmy girl. I think there's also something about it with being neurodivergent and not feeling like mainstream fashion expresses my personality very well because of it. One of the things that I say to my friends is that the things that constitute someone's identity, like the things that they like, the things that they watch, the things that they do, change so frequently for someone who has ADHD. I'm just, I'm just following wherever the dopamine is. That makes it really hard to define my identity by those kinds of things. So it's a little bit easier for me to kind of define identity and give myself like a boundary for who I think I am through my clothing. This clothing is just like a little bit more flexible on a daily basis. If you're wondering about how long this usually takes me to complete, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So I like to just pop on like a TV show or a couple of YouTube videos. And it's kind of like my way of winding down for the evening. The next day. And we're back. Welcome. Uh, it is the next day and I wish I could say good morning, uh, but it's like, it's 1 p.m. I have been wearing my curlers probably like almost 24 hours at this point, so I think it's time to take them out. <laughs> oh, I also need my phone so I can start answering a questions. So this is the final product. And we're gonna start taking them out, but first I need my phone so I can answer everyone's questions. So first of all, I got a lot of questions asking me to show you how I do the hair and the curls. So hopefully this video has provided thus far. But the first one comes from X Taylor XB and they are asking how to make friends in academia. I've been feeling alone during the first year of postgrad. I will be completely honest, I am not the best at making friends, so I'm not sure I should be providing this advice, but I highly highly recommend trying to make some online friends if the online space is somewhere that you enjoy being. I have found some of my closest friends through social media and things like YouTube. It's where I met Kaylin, it's where I met Madison, it's where I met Chanel. And the thing about finding people on social media is that you can kind of get a sense for who they are and whether or not they like the same kinds of things as you. So you can kind of avoid that like awkward getting to know each other where things might not work out, you guys might not like actually get along. In terms of like actually making friends in person with your cohort, I recommend just sitting down next to someone, turning to them, sticking out your hand for a handshake and saying, hi, I'm Katie, what's your name, who are you? 
would you like to get a cup of coffee sometime? I did manage to make one friend that way and that is how I tend to make friends in person. I don't really understand the social rules of making friends so I tend to just be really direct <laughs> and I find that I tend to get good responses. Lastly, I would really recommend checking out the Accepted Society, which I'll leave a link to in my description below, because it's an online community platform for scholars, students, academics, professors, independent researchers, whatever, and we have built a really wonderful community there, and I guarantee that you will find someone that you get along with in that community. Okay, next question is, how did you figure out your vintage style? So I kind of talked a little bit about this last night. Most of my inspiration came from Instagram and social media and YouTube. I started off very strictly 19, 40s, 1950s, but I found that that was restricting my desire to actually want to dress up in vintage clothing because if it wasn't like perfect, I wouldn't do it. So I started to go more for the kind of like ambiguously, vaguely vintage-esque and kind of stumbled into the just old antique aesthetic, I guess I would say. A little bit of dark academia, sometimes a little bit of fantasy thrown in there, but I'm not very good at that. But it takes some experimentation. I spent a lot of time during the pandemic trying to put together different outfits and doing photo shoots to see which style I liked the best, but I also leave it very open-ended because I like to be able to experiment and sometimes I don't want to wear vintage, so I let myself explore. Next is what's been your favorite class undergrad or grad so far? And that is a very difficult question to answer because I have taken many classes in my lifetime. <laughs> I think it's less about which which class I like the most and more about which final project that I did for a class that I like the most. And I would say I really, really, really enjoyed my museum curation and exhibit design class because the final product at the end of that was to actually put together an exhibit proposal. And I really enjoyed that process. I think that our exhibit proposal was put together really, really well as a class-wide project. I loved being able to all work together like that because I really enjoyed the community at UC Berkeley. I was on the design team and I really liked the design process Process and I could see me doing that at maybe at some point in the future. I also really enjoyed paleopathology in undergrad because the final project that I did for that one was about the relationship between archaeology and corsetry and myths about corsetry, which is kind of what led me into applying to grad school and stumbling across this program. Then I would say my materiality of fashion class from this semester has been really interesting and really cool, especially because we get to be like up close and personal with actual vintage and antique garments garments from museum collections, but the class with the project that I'm most excited about is my foundation class called Fashion Studies Key Concepts, and I'm really excited about that one because the research for it is, I'm obsessed. Like, I think it's going to turn into my thesis research. I think about it all the time, I talk about it all the time. Speaking of research, Sammy on Wheels says, tell us where your research is headed. And I don't want to give everything away because I'm also making a video that's based on the research I did for this project. I'll just give you guys the title and I'll give you like a little, a little taste. Um, the title of my project that I think will turn into my thesis is called Vintage Fashion, Vintage Lives, Vintage Clothing, and Social Media in the White Nationalist Movement. So the intersection between how people are using vintage clothing on social media as part of the white nationalist slash alt-right movement. Kind of a serious topic. Don't really know how to make a joke out of this one, but I'm very interested in it and it is a fascinating phenomenon. And now I look like Shirley Temple and taking a step back from the questions, if we're talking about this as a tutorial, this is where I feel like a lot of people get discouraged because they take the rollers out and they have these absolutely just wild curls, but the secret is brushing them out, which I'm going to do shortly after I put on some makeup because I can't stand to not be wearing makeup anymore. <laughs> and we're back. I feel much better now, except for I look pale as frick with this dark red lipstick. Time to start the brush out process. So the next question says, how do you pick things that feel authentic rather than fitting into an archetype? And I am going to assume that this is about fashion and clothing. And I mean, the thing is for me, I mean, I feel like I'm just not very good at being consistent with 
like styles and trends. So, I mean, I naturally gravitate towards having kind of an eclectic wardrobe. I think part of that has to do with my ADHD brain, kind of just finding the things that make it happy and landing on those things and adding them to my wardrobe, even if they don't necessarily make an outfit or fit into a specific trend or a specific aesthetic. And a large part of it also has to do with the things that I feel comfortable wearing and the things that I think I look pretty in as well. I mean, most of my wardrobe is dark muted tones and like the color maroon is everywhere because I really like that color. I like the way it looks on me. I have more skirts than I have pants because I think skirts are more comfortable and I feel more comfortable wearing skirts. There's also, however, the challenge of like seeing clothing that I like, but I know that I won't wear. So even if I think it's pretty, even if I think that it like fits into my aesthetic or whatever, if I won't wear it for whatever reason, and usually for me it comes down to sensory issues, I won't put it in my wardrobe no matter how badly I want it in my wardrobe. And this is true for vintage clothing too. I used to buy vintage items that were true vintage, that were a little bit too small for me and were physically uncomfortable to wear. And then they just sat in my wardrobe for ages. So I made a conscious decision to stop buying things that I thought would be uncomfortable because I know I don't wear them. Everything that I have in my wardrobe expresses my identity to a certain extent in a way that makes me really happy. Like when I look at this item of clothing and I see myself represented in it and I put it on, it's just like that relationship between me and my clothing is really important to me. And it makes me feel very good and very happy when I find an item that I really connect with. So I focus more on that that feeling with me and my clothes rather than whether or not it like fits a particular archetype or a particular aesthetic or stereotype or whatever word you wanna use. I got another question about how do you make friends in big schools, especially a place like Berkeley. And one thing I did forget to say is that you should join a club. I think that you just go out of your way to find social clubs, social events, whatever it is that floats your boat and join it. I found most of my friends through like the anthropology club at community college, the anthropology club at UC Berkeley, the people who went to the transfer student center at UC Berkeley since I was a transfer student. Finding some kind of like social group or activity that you identify with because you're going to find like-minded people there. Next question is about vintage style items from modern stores or war wardrobe staples. This is a great question because it's very difficult to find actual true vintage that comes in a size larger than like a small or a medium, maybe. The things that I keep in my wardrobe as wardrobe staples for dressing vintage are things like button down blouses, poofy sleeved blouses, fit and flare dresses. I go for circle skirts, A-line skirts, anything that has gathers in it. T-shirts can also look vintage if you might roll up the sleeves or you tuck them into a skirt. Belts are also a really great way to make an outfit look vintage. If you take a t-shirt, tuck it into a long skirt and add a belt, it will instantaneously make it look a little bit more vintage than if you just wore a t-shirt with a skirt. Layering is also a good way to make something look vintage. So putting a sweater vest over a blouse, wearing a turtleneck underneath a pinafore style dress, those kinds of things. So I would highly recommend if you are starting out your vintage wardrobe to start with things like long skirts, circle skirts, button down blouses, and then experiment from there. I think that's about good for the brush out. Here's the thing about brushing out your curls or doing a brush out. Sometimes it can take you half an hour to get it to look right. Sometimes it just falls into place naturally after a couple minutes of brushing and there's no in between. I am going to quickly change my outfit. We will be back for the remaining questions and we're back. So real quick, going back to the question about finding things that feel authentic versus fitting into an archetype. As I was getting dressed, I am standing there like putting on my necklace and looking in the mirror and I'm going, oh, yes, this is my final form. This is who I was meant to be. So that is, that is what I am looking for when I am picking out an outfit or looking for an item of clothing to add to my wardrobe. Does it make me feel like a little gremlin who's excited over his new treasure to add to his hoard? There you go. <laughs> That's totally not a Diablo 3 video game reference. Another question about vintage style makeup that you can buy. I just wear regular makeup. If you want makeup that is inspired by vintage makeup and that like kind of follows the same look and formula of vintage makeup, I would recommend looking at Besame Cosmetics. I've never personally used them, but I have heard great things about them and I know that they are very popular in the vintage community. The next question is a really great question that I'm so glad somebody asked. And it's how do you balance ADHD sensory needs if that's a concern for you with vintage styles. 
As I was saying about finding clothing that you like, finding clothing that also feels good on your body. I didn't have as many sensory issues pre-pandemic with my clothing. At the start of the pandemic and you know, moving through the pandemic, I gained a little bit of weight and my clothes no longer fit me in the way that I was used to. So things were a little bit too tight, things were a little bit too hot, too warm. Coming out of the pandemic and being in an environment that is so overstimulating sensory-wise, AKA the city of New York being loud 24-7, <laughs> I do get a little bit overwhelmed by the clothes that I wear from time to time. I try to balance this by going for the clothing that I think is more comfortable, that I think I can withstand wearing, and it's also helpful that I am in a different climate than I was back in California. I really don't like being sweaty, and I am a sweaty girl, and California is hot 75% of the year, so I couldn't wear like the multiple layers that I like to wear when dressing vintage. So being in a slightly colder climate, at least during this time of year, has been helpful in balancing that sensory need. Another thing that I try to do is if I am noticing that I'm feeling overwhelmed sensory wise and my clothes are really bothering me, for example, when I'm like in the city or I just finished a class and like I'm really worn out, I will go and I'll sit in the quiet part of the library with my noise canceling headphones for a little while. And that usually helps kind of decrease the sensory overload that I experience. Because I'm just experiencing so many sensory inputs from so many different places, going to the library with the noise canceling headphones kind of like takes out the noise and visual stimulus. That reduces it enough to a level that I can handle. Other things that I do, I opt for elastic waistbands in anything that I can, because I don't like having something tight around my waist, just so that there's more flexibility in my clothing. Very truly, I will just wear t-shirts with a skirt, and sometimes I'll just wear a big baggy sweatshirt with leggings. <laughs> it's all about how I'm feeling that day, how I want to present myself that day, how much effort I feel like putting in that day, and I don't wear vintage 24-7. If a sweatshirt and leggings is where I need to be, that is what I'll do. Okay, last we have a couple of questions that are not vintage related, so I'm going to talk about those a little bit. The first one is reflections on the semester, and the only thing that I have to say very truly is that this is one of the hardest things that I've ever put myself through voluntarily. I knew that leaving my family and support system and the comfort of home and the state that I grew up in and moving clear across the country when I've never lived anywhere else but California was going to be tough. I just didn't think it was going to be this tough. I chalk most of it up to both a regular culture shock as well as academic culture shock because going from the UC system to a completely different academic system as well as a completely different field of study was the only word I have for it is shock. It was a bit of a shock to the system. That's the whole point of saying that it was culture shock. It was a hard adjustment, acclimating to the climate and the culture and the people and finding my space in the city, a massive, massive challenge. It got better and it got to a point where I was really enjoying it. And I am very passionate about the research that I'm pursuing at this moment, but I just wish it hadn't been bookended by another kind of difficult situation. I am in full support of the part-time faculty strike that happened, um, but it was of course disruptive and confusing, but I am excited for next semester and I'm really excited to get to the thesis writing stage because I have so many thoughts. The next one is, what do you wish you had known prior to going to Parsons? The first thing that came to mind when someone asks me this question is the recent realization that I had, which is that I keep trying to push myself into something that I think that I should like, even though I know I don't actually like it, or it's something that I said that I liked at the beginning of learning about it, and as I learned more about it, I realized I actually didn't like it that much <clears throat> in archeology. span I wish I had known how to lean more into the things that I like, like the things I actually like, the things that I can't stop talking about, but sometimes I am just oblivious to my own needs, wants, and desires. <laughs> but I'm slowly figuring it out. And a big part of it, I think, has to do with fear, like the fear of failing, the fear of not being good enough at the things that you actually like and trying to overcome that fear because I just wanna do the things that I like. And if pursuing research about white nationalism is that, then why not? What is the one thing you learned that everyone who is thinking about going to grad school should know? If you have unpopular opinions that are going to challenge the institution of the academy, prepare to be a little disliked. <laughs> I personally think that fashion studies is a little too Eurocentric still, and it's currently going through this like period of self-growth. Educated in anthropology, which is my undergraduate degree, I came into fashion studies with more of that global perspective in mind, and so coming up against Eurocentrism in fashion history and fashion studies right at the beginning of my program, I think made me uh, not as popular amongst my cohort, <laughs> but I am very deeply passionate about it, so. Can you talk about anything you've done that has really helped you adjust to the new environment 
environment and thrive at your new school. Finding friends, finding community is like the number one most important thing that you need in grad school or when you're going from one environment to a new environment and having to make an adjustment. So knowing that you have people you can rely on and people who, who will support you through the tough times is going to be imperative. And I also suggest spending some time by yourself, exploring your new environment and figuring out what areas you do and don't like. Everyone told me at the beginning when I moved to New York that you just kind of have to carve out your own space and figure out like the little places in the city where you feel the most comfortable and that is that could not be more true and I did the same thing at Berkeley. I had my favorite study spaces, I had my apartment, I had my favorite stores, I had my favorite cafe and being able to build that familiarity is going to be very important. All right well that is all the questions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little quasi tutorial for the hair. Subscribe for more grad school and vintage related content. Leave me a comment. I'm curious because vintage is a little bit out there. Would you ever style your hair like this or dress vintage? And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye bye!